Have you ever wanted more pleasure in your life? You're in the right space. Hey, it's Rachel. I've been intimacy coaching for 11 years, which has inspired me to do an extended series all year long, talking about ways to incorporate pleasure into your everyday life for yourself, but also a partnered relationship if you're in one of those. In all year, my messages have been semi-sneaky because we didn't really directly talk about pleasure, but we talked about intimacy building throughout this entire year. So for the month of December, I'm going to wrap our series up by talking about things that I believe we as humans are doing to really hinder the best kinds of connections we could have in relationships, whether it's with a partner or anybody else. So I just did a video where I talked about not feeling our emotions. And today what I want to talk about is not identifying our emotions because these are two separate things. We can't help but feel. Okay, so even if it just like bubbles up at the surface and like your eyes kind of well up or your lip kind of quivers, that is you beginning to feel an emotion. And what I talked about in that previous video that most of us do when they're lower level feeling emotions are not described as good feeling emotions, we suppress them and brush them under the rug. Now today what I want to talk about is the actual identification of said emotion because it's a key indicator of what needs aren't being met for us. If we're feeling anyway, right, if we're feeling joyful and we're laughing our ass off, then a need is being met happiness, right? But if we don't feel so good and we cry or we're angry or we're frustrated, it's still telling us that there's a need not being met intrinsically. So most humans are not even, we're not taught, but we're, let alone given the environment to express these properly to, to then identify them, especially for little boys. What do we tell them? Like your anger is unacceptable. No, it's, it's just true feeling of somebody who doesn't know what anger even is. It's telling me that I feel a certain way. We also tell little girls, uh, well, we tell all kids, stop crying. I'll take this away if you don't stop crying. I will put you in a corner and segregate you from everybody you know and separate you from love because you're, you're, you're doing this thing. You're operating this way. Now, when we can give permission to the feeling, identify in our body and really addressing what it is, it helps us to understand the concern. So as an example, when my little one gets big emotions, she sometimes doesn't even know why she feels that way, right? But it can be as simple as asking her to go and brush her teeth, but now her legs are broken and now she's too tired, right? Now, instead of doing the old parenting thing, which I would have done by losing my own patience and getting frustrated and just do what I told you because I'm your parent, I get down on her level and I'm like, wow, I can see that we're feeling some really big emotions. What do you suppose is bringing that on? And nine times out of 10, it allows for her to search and say, I'm just really tired, mom, right? It's the end of the day. I went to school today and I'm just tired. Like, I don't want to brush my teeth. So now I'm going to associate that my legs are broken because I want you to carry me to brush my teeth because it's not something I want to do. So she's feeling frustration, but she's also feeling angst. And she's also feeling, I mean, she's feeling a lot of things, but I'm giving her the permission to identify those. Now, does it correlate as a grown ass adult that you shouldn't, you can't walk to brush your teeth? Of course not. But when you're five years old and you don't understand how you're feeling or why you're feeling, giving her the safe space and permission to disclose those to herself and to me and to really understand them is going to absolutely give her the blueprint to navigating those emotions and holding space for other people who need that as she's getting older. It is the one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself as well as the people that you love is the freedom to actually express those emotions. Because when we express them authentically in their moments, they're ours. They're not meant to hurt other people or to take it out on others. It's meant to address the needs that aren't being satiated for self. That's all I had to say. Thanks for being here. I'll be here back tomorrow. Have a good day.